you know, it's Thursday, you know, who's waiting just to, to speak and start salivating now because he's the captain of cuisine. He's the culinary colonel. He's the Tabrizi talisman, the Farsi food meister, the Turkish tradesman. It's your chef, Hossare. And this is Rook Hospitality. Hi, this is your chef, Hossare. And this is Rook Hospitality. Hello, Chef Haas. Hello. Hello. How is beautiful San Francisco? It's great, and I feel awesome. The awesome comes <laughs> <laughs> soon, so oh. I found my word. Oh, Very witty. awesome. I love it. <laughs> and, and this, by the way, this is the first time you haven't answered that question by saying, I just jogged or ran f- 15 miles or something. <laughs> so. No, I was excited to print through the awesome word. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. You are indeed awesome. Uh, what are you teaching us about today? Well, today we're going to talk uh, Iranian style braising meat and the techniques and the, why they did that. Okay. Iranian style braising meat. I have to, uh, I have to confess that uh, Savvy Roham, uh, who helps, uh, who works with you on this, uh, these segments now, has uh, earlier in the show gave, gave us a little heads up of what we're going to be talking about. So uh, braising meat. I'm going to ask you first, I guess, what bra- – as far as I remember, braising meat is what is uh, when you slow cook meat in oil uh, with vegetables uh, for, for over a long period of time. Is that is that how you define it? What, what, tell us what braising meat yeah. is. Two, you mix it two. One is braising, one is a comfy. Cooking it slowly in a, uh, its own fat, that's called comfy. It's delicious. And also braising means basically you are sealing, you slowly caramelizing the meat outside, sealing the meat, and then with the broth and vegetables and the spices, you are slowly cooking for a long period of time because meat has muscles. So you want to break the meat slowly if those muscles become tender and that's a slow cook and long period. Okay, so now is there a Iranian style of braising meat or is there a particular Iranian style and, and if so, how is that done? Absolutely. The Iranian style called gourmet. Gourmet is driven word from Turkish for from gourmach. Gourmach means, it literally means uh, frying. And the reason they used to do that one as essential that the Kianjan uh, uh, Yak Charles all days they didn't have the meat keep it in the refrigerator, so they had to braise it in the uh, basically oil and fat, cure it, and keep it for the longer, for the winter especially. And that was a particular. And the, the reason Iranian braising is different because there's no spice or herb used for this technique so it can have a multi-usage for any kind of dishes in the future for uh, stews for uh, uh, the uh, ground uh, everything you want to use you can because there's no flavor added at the brazen but the new techniques we use in the kitchen like your french or in my kitchen we braise the meat like lamb sham particular for dish that we're going to serve so after that, we cannot serve that one with another kind. Mm. Can you just re, re tell me again? I because uh, sometimes I don't quite understand these things. So so, uh, why does braising the meat make it last longer? You are curing the meat basically with its own fat and salt added. So you are protecting the meat from getting spoiled mm-hmm. and keeping it in a cool area. Oh. And what what are the are there advantages of braising meat besides the fact that it it it, it, it lasts longer? It's uh, uh, in the, on the long run, it makes it uh, that like again when you braise the meat, you tenderize the meat slowly cooking, so it becomes like a fall apart and also lasts longer. And again, it was a method of the uh, old fashion even other countries they uh, braise the meat and cure the meat for uh, stay longer and they can use it in the winter when they had a harsh days so is there a um i guess the the question is in terms of the the iranian style or what you're teaching us today and what you're going to teach in that video uh that we'll post at the uh, at our site rookmedia.com and on our telegram channel it, 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 do you have a technique the way we do this and uh, that speeds up the cooking time because of course the the one sort of flag on the play here is that it's going to take a long time to do this that's the that the whole the whole notion is to do it over time right so how, right. How, how how what kind of useful technique do you have in terms of speeding it up yeah basically you take the meat cut it small pieces 
with bone or without bone doesn't matter and you are cooking in the hot boiled water so that's actually the first step you are cooking it with the hot water boiling you're taking care of the bacteria might be outside the meat so basically you are making the meat safe and also about half an hour you cook time so that's kind of you don't want to cook all the way you cook it and after that you strain the meat so you get you get rid of the calf you don't want to keep that right? exactly you uh-huh. strain yeah exactly okay. and then after that when you strain the meat from the broth we will talk about broth later what they use for that for it what they use for it but for the meat they take another pot with the animal fat or sometimes they uh, use it the, the tail of the uh, lamb or or if you don't like it you can use a regular like a g for it and you are caramelizing and you are uh, give it a little color but you don't want to overcook it because it crumbles and then after that let it cool and when you put in ceramic or the clay pots you want to make sure top of it it's fat so that seals the meat from the uh, protect the meat from the getting spoiled or bacteria and you can keep that one in the cool area which is in the old days every household they have an underground called ambari or sardabe it was particularly made like an old school yakchala homemade to keep this for the winter. It's like a cellar, right? Yes, they're like yeah, exactly yeah. like a cellar. Exactly. Okay. Well, uh, so, and what are we going to see exactly on this uh, video? On the video, I am taking the audience step by step how to cook them in the uh, boiling water and separate it and explaining them how they can brazen the, uh, uh, the, the timing and how they can keep it, especially if you don't need anymore to keep it for winter. But even this meat in the refrigerator can last for as long as you want it. it is almost, as long as you don't touch the penetrate, the top part of the, the uh, fat, it stays longer. But the moment you touch it, then you have to use it like a maximum right, right. Ten, week or 10 days can i can i ask you so if if um if i buy some some meat uh and um i i know that i'm not going to have time i, I know that i'm not, not going to eat it right away so I'm, I'm i'm buying it for the future um does it make sense to put that meat in the refrigerator in the freezer now or to braise it and put it in the freezer Great question. Braising is better because you are respecting the flavor, keeping the flavor. But if you put a freezer, anytime you put the meat in the freezer, you lose the quality of the flavors. Mm. Ah, it, it's, I won't recommend the freezing the meat, especially like steak, like a lamb shank. So, so okay. those people who, you know, you go buy in bulk a bunch of meat from Costco you, it, it, and put it in the freezer, you, you're, you're saying it actually makes sense to braise it first before you do that. Actually, prevent from buying the frozen product unless it's the lamb shank is okay. Hind shank, lamb shank is okay. But when you go to steak, ribeye steak, New York steak, if it's frozen, the flavor is 50, 80 percent gone. Mm. Yeah, I won't recommend it. It has to be a fresh one. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, we'll so never freeze again. That's you, it. You That's you the won't. end of that. <laughs> <laughs> you can, like, it's the best way to experiment it. Like, it will have a one fresh piece, one frozen, defrost mm. it. And also, you, when you defrost the meat, you are jeopardizing the quality and also exposure for the bacteria. You might mm. even get sick. That's another uh. a problem when you, that you have the concern when you have a defrost. In the no, fro- it's just, a, it's just a convenience thing. I mean, obviously, the meat from the butcher is better, but... But uh, you know, if you if you can't keep running to the butcher, you want to buy some meat and put it in the freezer or the or something. But this is very instructive to know that you lose. I mean, if you lose that much of the taste, it's, it really isn't worth it, is no. it? Yeah, and it's fair exactly. to say, I suppose that back then they did it to prevent the meat from spoiling. Now you do it more so to preserve the taste and flavor exactly. of it, right? And now, also, they used to do that one in the summer or uh, middle of the fall, like uh, the whole family household. They used to take, depends on the, how many people live in, one or two whole animals. They used to butcher it and cook the whole thing. So in the winter, all they have to do when they're cooking, just rather than cooking two, three hours this meat, they had like about warm it up, add it to their ashes, soups, or stews, or anything they want to use it. So it was a practical, mm. quick meal, make it with this core, uh, the, the brazen meat. Isn't it funny that this ancient tactic actually is better than the modern way of freezing meat? That to That's me crazy. is pretty cool. I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Great point, uh, Kianjan. What I want to know, Chef, is that in terms of taste, like if I'm cooking stew with fresh meat, um, in terms of taste, would it be different if I were to braise the meat and then cook the, my stew with it, or no? 
Yes, because you have the flavor stays there. But in this case, you are, uh, I know the juice comes, you cook them for 20, 30 minutes at the beginning of the boiling water, but mm. uh, you can use that one. We call that one eshkane. And oh. you can use it for the uh, family or old days because when they cook this, uh, braise this meat, it smell was so good. The whole neighborhood could have smell it. So what they used to do, when they take this broth and add a few small pieces of the meat, we braise the meat to it and give, pass it around the neighbors to share the love. Chef Haas, I thank you. Uh, by, by the way, is it is it more effective to braise meat with Shia's jazz music <laughs> on piano behind you or without? Uh, <laughs> oh, to answer your question, I cannot cook if there's not music <laughs> playing in the background. I, music is basically, I, I cook, but music is the food for my soul. Mm, ah, beautifully that. said. Chef Haas, thank you. We look forward to seeing your video and uh, look forward to talking again next week, brother. It's always a pleasure to be a great crew of the rock. Thanks, Bye. Chef. Bye. 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 Chef Hasare in San Francisco with hospitality. So you can see his latest video, in this case, how to braise meat Iranian style at rookmedia.com. Our website, it'll be there right on the front page there. Or our Telegram channel. It's also available there. Our Telegram channel is Rook Media.